But Congressman Kenny believes that our men and women in uniform promise each and every day to protect our nation, whatever the cost. They deserve our support from the first day of service on to the rest of their lives. He has recently formed a Veterans Advisory Board to ensure that he is aware of all the needs of area veterans. And John McElvey is the Veterans Service Officer in Newton, and he locally is on that advisory board. So, without further ado, may I welcome Congressman Joseph Kennedy III. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Um, thank you all for being here this morning. A little earlier, I hope you got your coffee already. Um, and thank you so much for including me in a, uh, a very special day. It is an absolute, uh, an absolute honor for me to be here with all of you this morning. Ron, I want to begin just by saying thank you uh, for all that you do, for uh, everything that you do, on behalf of veterans and their families here in Bedfield. Um, you set an extraordinary example for the rest of us, and I just want to say thank you. So thank you very much for all you do. To all the men and women here this morning who have served and continue to serve, thank you is an incredible understatement. But sometimes we have to rely on simple words to express <coughs> tremendous things. So from our proud commonwealth and a grateful nation, thank you for your service and your sacrifice. But we're reminded of this weekend at events like this in cities and towns across the country is that our service men and women hold a very special place in every single community's heart. You don't have to go far to see examples of how Medfield honors their veterans. Just down the street from here, you can visit the war memorials at Baxter Park, or read the names of those from Medfield who lost their lives in the war in Vietnam at the plaque at Blake Middle School. Across the country, our heroes' names adorn our schools, our parks, our roads, and our bridges. There's a fitting symmetry, I think, in that proud American tradition. The idea that we name the central structures of our society after the men and women whose sacrifice allows us to enjoy those basic luxuries. Walking over to the local park, driving down the street to see a friend, making a quick trip to the post office, or dropping your kids off at school. It's never been flags or songs that say the best about our freedom. It's those quiet, unremarkable moments in our everyday lives that get to the heart of what it means to be free. And since the birth of this country, our men and women in uniform have been stewards of our liberty and our safety. Today, more than ever, we need to support them when they return. At a time when our country is winding down two long and painful wars, when the face of our military, the experience of their service, and the contours of their wounds have changed so dramatically. We must have the programs, the policies, and the funding to make sure that they get the care they need when they come home. This country has no greater responsibility. So, once again, to all of you here this morning, and particularly to our veterans, their families, and every single one of us that loves them and supports them, thank you for what you have done. May this great nation continue to work every day to be worthy of your sacrifice. Thank you. So, Congressman is going to walk around and uh, see each of you at your tables and before he leaves, but he does have a, a tight schedule. And we have one too. And we're all hungry, I think, right? So, are we ready with the food? We're ready, I got the signal. So, uh, today my theme is really on, uh, can, is, is this working, Yes. My theme is really on the state of Massachusetts veterans' benefits. So, Massachusetts is arguably the most progressive state in the country at providing and supporting veterans. It, it, many of you can't really believe that, but it's true. One, one, one evidence of that is the veteran service office position. This is the only state that insists that each one of their towns have a veteran service officer. The only state. Um, 
So our state legislators have been doing this job since 1861, back in the Civil War, when they started introducing legislation to support veterans. And, and Senator James Timothy and Denise, Representative Denise Garlick have demonstrated a commitment to continue to support their legis legislations and the benefits for the veteran community. So, it's my pleasure that they're both here today. So I'd like to introduce uh, Denise Garlick. She's, uh, she supports, uh, she was a nurse in the VA. I think she's gonna talk to you about that. So she has um, a lot of experiences with veterans and those who not only served, but suffered. Good morning, everyone. I'm Denise Garlick. I think I've had a chance to say hello to all the people on the periphery, but none of the people in the middle, so hello to all of you. <laughs> I wanted to thank Ron for that nice introduction. When Ron talks about every town in Massachusetts having a veterans agent, I want you to know I believe that Medfield has one of the most extraordinary veterans agents. And Ron, more than anyone else I know, is knitting together the generations of the past and of the present and of the future. And I think it's incredible work, Ron. Thank you. And I want to thank my dear friend and colleague, Senator Timothy, who actually is letting me go first. Now, anyone who wants to let the woman talk first, I don't know. But <laughs> I'm trying to get home to the town of Needham, who also has a veteran service this morning. Ron has a had a chance to tell you that I'm a former <laughs> VA nurse. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. I'm a registered nurse and have been all my life. And outside of my four children, the thing in my life that has given me the most pride and the most satisfaction is being a nurse. And my one regret actually happened in my nursing profession as a VA nurse because I was 21 years old in the days when we wore our dress whites, our white uniforms and our caps and our white shoes. And I had come from the Baptist Hospital. I was a student nurse at the New England Baptist Hospital, very prim and very proper, and went immediately to the West Roxbury VA where those veterans I was taking care of, regardless of their illness or injury, would get out of that hospital and cross <laughs> both lanes of the VFW Parkway to get to a liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> and they would come back with cases of beer on their wheelchair and little nicks tucked under their arms, and I would turn them in. I would turn them in immediately. And I regret that. Today, I would never turn those veterans in no matter what they wanted to do. I wanted to speak to you briefly about veterans health. I know that our senator will talk to you about many of the things the state's doing, but I wanted to speak to you about veterans health, whether you are um, a person who is eligible for VA benefits or whether through your private insurance that you're thinking about those health issues. And I wanted to let you know that in our country, there are um, 1,700 sites of VA care that people can go to. It, the VA system is serving 8.76 million veterans um, presently in the country today. And one of the things that I am the most struck by that I would like each of you to think about is each generation of veterans has <coughs> had some unique health issues that are being serviced today. For our World War II veterans and for our Korean veterans, many of the issues related to health, like for everyone else in the population about that age, has to do with aging and aging well and being able to um, move into a time where they can um, have the best health possible for them. For our Vietnam veterans, I would have to say as someone from the Vietnam War era, um, we are also looking at aging well and aging healthy. But in the health um, menu of things that people are looking at, there's a great amount of work that the veterans at a national le level are doing around Agent Orange and other herbicide exposure that we need to understand. And where you are seeking your health, if this is something that has impacted you, if your own doctor doesn't know about this, go to a local VA, get information, or be able to access that information. For our Gulf War veterans, there are unique health issues around Gulf War syndrome and those illnesses that were related to that. And that's a unique body of knowledge for which there is a great deal of research being done. 
and for our veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan, what we are learning now, because medical care in the field has gotten so sophisticated and is so successful that we have veterans, thank God, who are living, but are living with catastrophic injuries and closed head injuries. And the body of knowledge and the information that we need for those veterans is within the VA system. So we want to be able to show that we are accessing the most um, accessible information and the highest quality information and the state of art information that's there. Through the VA system, there is also a tremendous amount of information that is available on blindness rehabilitation, on HIV and AIDS, on alcohol and drug dependency, on radiation exposure, which might be important for some of our veterans, and on um, care for the caregiver, which is something that I am particularly pleased to see the veterans take on. Talking about, for our veterans who have injuries or who have illnesses, that there is also hopefully someone, a loved one who is caring for them, who also needs care. Um, that may be different than our veterans who are homeless, um, who don't have a caregiver, and who need to be at the very top of our agenda today as we're talking. Um, we also want to be able to have that discussion now for one of the very first times we're talking about very expanded health care for women veterans, and what that looks like, and what that's going to mean today, and what it's going to mean in the future. And there are several ways that you can access this help. Certainly, Ron is going to help you to know if you are VA eligible. If you are not VA eligible, it's important that you understand your own insurance and know how to get the information that the VA has that you need related to illness and injury. And there is um, a program called Coaching into Care. So for those of you today who are gathered, I would say that you are the most fortunate because as veterans, you are here clearly in a community that honors and respects you. You are surrounded by people who care for you. And you need to think about the veterans who are not here today. You know, where are they in your community? What are their needs? And there is actually a program that is run on the federal level that's called Coaching Into Care, where it will give you hints and ideas and an actual person that you can talk to if there's a veteran in your life that you are concerned about that you think is not seeking the care that they need or can't be compliant with the care that's being prescribed so that you can help to coach them. And I see that as a very valuable tool. I think it would be very helpful for all of us to be looking at that. And the last thing that I wanted to let you know is the coaching into care is so very important, but we also know that there are crisis points in every person's life, and so that means in every veteran's life. And there is a veteran's crisis helpline that if you believe something is happening and you believe care is insufficient or care isn't being sought, that you can contact that number and they will put you in contact that will care for you, will care for your loved one, I will care for that veteran in your community that you're looking out for. So I hope this is helpful information. I am so very pleased to be here with all of you this morning. And <coughs> I know that it is the veterans who have made our community and our country strong. And I am deeply grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Next. We're going to hear from Senator James Timothy. He's been our senator since 2005. And one of the first things he did as senator was to support a bill called the Military Enhanced Relief Individual Tax Bill, Merit Bill. And, and, and what he did is the, uh, the bill that supported the Chapter 22 benefits that all uh, real estate exemptions that the um, many service-connected uh, veterans are enjoying today. So, uh, if you will, Senator James Timothy. Thank you, Ron, and good morning, everyone. Good it's, morning, uh, Ron. it's a delight to be here with you today. I want to thank uh, Ron and Roberta for putting on such a wonderful show, the team in the kitchen, and certainly the Warriors for Warriors. I mean, what a, what a delightful day. Uh, 
I hate to admit it to uh, the nurse, to Denise, but I start my morning, every morning, without fail, at uh, 7-Eleven, I go in and get a big soda uh, to start the day. Not a big coffee drinker, and I don't like breakfast because it reminds me of waking up. <laughs> and uh, so the guy at 7-Eleven, he says, what are you doing working today? Isn't it a holiday? He sees me come in with a suit and a tie. And I said, this is the most, these are the most important days on our, ca our nation's calendar as a government official. First is the most solemn day, Memorial, and right behind that is Veterans Day, where we go out in government with the spirit of, uh, of thanksgiving and remembrance. And it's not just my role as a, as a state senator and a government official uh, in the, the select uh, group that I work with up in the Massachusetts Senate, uh, the Committee on uh, Public Safety and Homeland Security, where I've had to chair that committee uh, for seven or eight years. I learned this at the, uh, at the dinner table. Not, I didn't learn too much there, as my parents would so sheepishly tell you. But uh, one thing, my dad was a former Marine. Uh, my uncle was a former Marine uh, who served in Vietnam as a, a lieutenant and a captain. And my brother, my oldest brother, was a recon Marine. And they'll tell, him, they'll tell anybody, or anybody who's a veteran, will say, once you've matriculated through a branch of service, and want a former Marine, you're always a Marine. You're always a, a, an Army, you're always part of the Army, you're always part of the Navy. So uh, very, very responsive to veterans. I learned it at an early age, and I'm very thankful, because I think that our first president, the great George Washington, said, you know, how we are served by our military will be how we treat them, I'm paraphrasing, when they return from war. So I think ourselves in the Massachusetts legislature <coughs> have taken a very serious approach as uh, Ron brought up with the merit tax uh, proposal and certainly one of the first things. My time in the, in the Senate, which is now almost 10 years, is around the same time as the conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq, where many of our citizen soldiers and our professional soldiers have been over there time and time again with a tremendous amount of sacrifice personally in their families and in their communities to serve us. Because we live in the greatest country the world has ever seen with a magnificent document that is the United States Constitution, which is modeled after the Massachusetts uh, Constitution. But we only got to this point uh, through revolution. It was through armed services by volunteers, by farmers, by shopkeepers, who went out and beat then the best military in the world and created this, as I say, this great country. So I think we all in government, and there are many, many spectrums in government where uh, we offer benefits. But the one that I can think, uh, the one area where there is unanimous, unanimous uh, effort and unanimous votes to the positive is those around those who served us, benefits to, for those who served us in their spouse in their descendants. So I'm very proud right now in the Massachusetts legislature in both branches a different, uh, a different uh, <coughs> version of a great bill has passed and it's going through a conference committee right now, the Valor 2 Act, which does a number of things for veterans that I would say that unless you talk to your veteran service officer and unless you access uh, the mass.gov website uh, and go to the Veterans Affairs Department, I think many of you wouldn't realize how you can and how you are eligible to qualify uh, for some benefits. I had a, a meeting with the Secretary of Veterans Services, Coleman Nee, who served in that capacity under Secretary Kelly and now the Secretary himself for five years, and he and his team work every day, they're, they're on that day seven days a week, up there working in the community or up on Boston with Beacon Hill and with government officials uh, to make sure that they are finding new ways to get to you to give you an idea of some of the programs in Massachusetts, as Ron so actually put it. You know, we're, we're not the top at everything. We like to be number one. And we are, and certainly with Title Town, we're number one in sports. But the one area in government, uh, aside from public schools, where I can say that we're number one in the nation, and that means number one in the world, is certainly veterans' benefits. So I would, if you are a veteran or if you are the spouse of a veteran, I think it's very important for you in the, in the coming weeks to make certain that you educate yourself of what you, uh, what you are eligible for, because I think you will be surprised as, as income levels have dropped because everything around you has uh, risen, cost of living, uh, gas, prescription drugs, everything keeps going up and you're very static in your income levels, I think you should make certain that you who've worked so hard and built this wonderful town, this wonderful area, this great state, make sure that you were aware of what we uh, as a government, what we as the generation behind you 
want to make certain we make available to you. And also, as the, this next generation of soldiers is transitioning out of Iraq now, and certainly in, in, in very short order, Afghanistan, as they are coming back, we are making certain that there are programs available for them to transition back into the workplace, into the community, into their family, and there's a myriad of programs because sometime when that veteran musters out and they have the celebration and there's the, the cheers, and by virtue of being the chair of public safety, I'm invited by the major general, the adjutant general of the National Guard, who I work with uh, constantly in matters around homeland security, to go to their deployments and also uh, when they come back in their change of commands. So as the cheering stops and then they go home, you know, that they can get in line, but certainly not lose their place or their place of employment because they've gone and served us, but they also have access to professional development, to professional license insurer, to as that our aristocracy of merit, our civil service exams. They also get extra points uh, for their service. And when we have uh, openings in public safety, there is that veterans preference. We're moving towards veterans preference in, uh, in our housing authorities. So there's a variety of, of, of governmental programs, not every bit of, uh, of government. Sometimes when I go to the Board of Selectmen, there's a little bit of bad news about state funding or uh, some programs at the state that aren't working. The one area where I can say, at least I can come down with a smile on my face and say, hey, you're getting your money's worth, is, uh, is appropriately what we're doing for veterans. So, you know, it's, as I say, we're here in a spirit of thanksgiving to all of you who have do done so much for us, for my generation, and my two kids uh, who are nine and six who are gonna grow up in, uh, in this great nation, in this great part of the great state. So thank you very much for all you've done. And I would just say, that, again, that gentle reminder, please make certain that you're in contact with Ron, you're in contact with my office, or in contact with the good representative Denise Garlick's office. But you'd be surprised what programs are out there and what programs that your government is doing for those who are coming back uh, now. You'll be very pleased with what Mass is doing in that regard. So it was wonderful spending the morning with you. I'll be around. I didn't want to bother you when you were eating, but I'll be around, come and visit you at your tables in case you have any individual questions. And uh, thanks very much for, for this job. I really appreciate it. I love doing it. Thank you. Sure, that, that, that hearing was on Wednesday morning. Myself and Bill Massaro and John Nunnery were there uh, to represent the, the, represent the community. It was before the Joint Committee on State, State Administration, and uh, we, had a, we had an excellent time before the hearing. We had done our, we had done our homework. We had letters uh, of support from, uh, from the town. We also 
uh, through the committee, had checked out with the Inspector General, had, uh, had positive letters from the State Administration, DCAM, and others. So we feel with like that unanimous um, consent uh, that we look to probably just a paperwork matter of within the next couple of weeks getting a, getting a favorable report from that committee, and then it will move to the Committee on Bonding and uh, uh, committee on, Joint Committee on Ways and Means, which I, which I am a member for a perfunctory review. So I anticipate, if not a, uh, a nice Christmas present for the community, I think we'll be doing that sometime by around Dr. King's holiday. Uh, just maybe the Valor Act or some others might just occupy some of the members. Uh, we're hoping to get the, the we're hoping to get the conference committee report for uh, for Pearl Harbor Day for December seventh. Um, so we're uh, we're actually we're very busy, but Pete, I expect to uh, as a fisherman bring back some fish uh, in the very near term. Any other questions? I can, I can do a filibuster almost as good as Richard DeSore, so be very careful with me in this mic. Oh, the, the, yes, Tom? $1,000 bonus, does that affect you, Tim? Can that affect? I, 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 would, I would certainly hope so, Tom. I'll, I'll get you an answer on that. I can't, I can't answer yes or no uh, right now. I believe it is. Ron, Ron believes it is. Yeah, I would hope we would not give it to you and then take it right back. That was uh, uh, a lot better based on the, based on the cost of living and inflation, certainly. But yeah, we're we're at a th we're at a thousand dollars in free tuition. Um, it, oh, I'm always looking to looking to get get north of that, uh, but that's where we are now. Thanks, Ron. Well, you all remember I said the state benefits go back to 1861. Here to fill us in on that, I'm going to ask Richard Jasogas to take us from 1861 to today. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, Many of you, uh, I know, knew my dad, uh, who was uh, a World War II veteran. He was in the Merchant Marines in both the, uh, the North Atlantic and the South Pacific. And growing up in the DeSauga household, uh, there were two uh, holidays that were always very, very special. And that was Memorial Day and Veterans Day. We had to make sure we had our flag out there. And uh, it just was a very, very special time with that. And that's something that was ingrained in me growing up and just to appreciate, as a non-veteran, to appreciate all that uh, the veterans did. And what I've been doing for the past uh, about 10 years now is that I make it a point myself to single out one particular veteran to personally say thank you to represent all the veterans. And this Veterans Day, I'd like to personally say thank you to uh, Joe Ryan. Um, Joe, we should know. <laughs> Joe, as you know, um, lifelong resident here at Medfield. Um, as World War II broke out, he left his home, uh, went into the Navy, uh, was, in the, uh, was in the Pacific. Uh, his ship was hit, uh, crew members uh, killed, uh, ship sat there uh, unprotected uh, in enemy waters for a long time, um, served our country, came back, worked in a variety of jobs, uh, was involved in the uh, service to not only the country as a veteran, but to the town and in his firefighting, uh, volunteering, and then eventually becoming uh, the uh, chief of our fire department and served uh, exemplary um, until he retired. Just uh, uh, a perfect example of what Tom Brokaw called uh, the greatest generation. And so, Joe, I'd like to just personally say thank you to you uh, as a veteran and to all of you here say personally thank you uh, to all of you who are veterans. And if you've noticed, if you've watched the Midfield uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting, we begin all our meetings with a moment of remembrance to all those uh, who are serving in Afghanistan. As a student, uh, as a teacher, I noticed a lot of my students, a lot of times, um, had no idea of the concept that we are even at war. And many of us today, not just students, it's like Afghanistan is kind of out of sight, out of mind. We are still a nation at war. And so we in Medfield do not forget. And that's why 
your Board of Selectmen begins each meeting by saying, having a moment of silence and remembrance of all those uh, that have served in Afghanistan. So uh, we in Midfield will not forget you. So thank you. One of the, one of the state benefits that is uh, available is called Chapter 115 benefits. Chapter 115 benefits helps those financially in financial need of veterans through the town of Medfield to help pay down their medical bills. So if you know some veteran or a widow of a veteran who is doing financial hardship, please ask them to see me and perhaps uh, we can arrange to provide some benefit for them by relieving their medical, some of their medical bills so they can be used for other things. There's a bunch of pamphlets that are available from the state of Massachusetts about the veteran benefits. So one, and I got a few of them out here on the table. One of them is this Veterans and Law and Benefits. This is by uh, Secretary of State uh, uh, William Galvin. And that, there's some copies out there. It lists all of the state benefits that are, are available. There's also uh, Attorney General Martha Coakley puts out a resource guide for veterans and service members. A lot of it is the same information, and I don't, I couldn't get any copies to set out for you today, but if you see me in my office or send me an email at rgriffin at medfield.net, I, I'll ha I can get a copy printed for you. And you, you heard from Denise Garlic, and what she did is she put together a little pamphlet that I have out there for you, and it is kind of a, a summary and an index of the benefits that you can, uh, you can use, to, and that references really both of these books, of what's in it, and gets a brief summary of them. Also, we have, from the state of Massachusetts, we have this we owe you. This is yet even a briefer summary of the benefits. To, these are all Massachusetts benefits, and I want to separate that between federal VA benefits and Massachusetts benefits. There are lots of them that, uh, that Massachusetts veterans are not aware of. And uh, this is put out by the Department of Veterans Services. Uh, Senator Timothy mentioned Coleman Nee, who is the director uh, of that, or secretary of that. Now, he technically is my boss. I do work for the uh, town of Massachusetts, but all my veteran training, all the things that I do, go through his office. So I'm very much in, in concert with what his goals are and his many goals that he uh, leads all the veterans throughout the state, the veteran service officers, to achieve. <clears throat> also, there's a little brochure out there from... Medfield Precision Car Wash. So all you veterans, free car wash today if you go down there. This is the one by Dunkin' Donuts down on uh, by Precision Motors, free car wash. Uh, they also offer you $4 off the rest of the, all year long. Just go up there when you get a car wash. Say you're a veteran, they'll knock $4 off the bill. So uh, that's a good deal. And they've been, they've been doing that for a number of years and uh, just wonderful what they do for the community. <clears throat> there's, there's two uh, signs out there. One of them is for a program called Met Vet, Met Vet Advisor. And it's a program done by the Department of Veteran Services. Uh, they, they put it up on the site and it lists all those veteran benefits that I've been talking about in, uh, from the Secretary and from the Attorney General. The difference is it's, it's searchable on the internet. So it's a, a web-based search. Uh, it, it does search federal benefits as well as state benefits. But, you know, if you're computer-oriented, you can put in English phrases and see, it'll scan and try to find a benefit that you might be <laughs> eligible for. Provide a summary of that benefit, and then, of course, we want you to come and see me and I'll explain it further. And that's the last thing that's on the table out there is my business card. If you don't know how to get a hold of me, you should. Uh, lastly, we, we have a lot of, uh, uh, you get a lot of phone calls every year about donations for veterans' causes. You know, 
our cause and most of the veteran service offices in this state, our cause is to stop these calls from happening because most of them are fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Occasionally there's a good, worthy cause, but they're hard to find. Most of them are fraudulent. Fraudulent in that they do everything legally, but most of your money doesn't go to where they think they say it's going to go. We're talking 15%. That's, that's unacceptable that for every dollar you give, only 15 cents might go to the cause that they're talking about. <clears throat> so out there is a, a, there's a military friends, it's question 32E on your income tax return. It's a pretty easy, safe way to donate some of your funds that you're sure about 90% of those funds are going to be used for veterans. So look at question 32E the next time you do a income tax return, your, your state income tax return, and this is where they get a lot of their funds from. So that certainly, there's a lot of worthwhile charities out there, they're just not usually calling you on the phone. Hi, I'm Shonda Schilling, and you're watching Medfield.tv. Access to our community.